In this video, we will, ha we will have a look at various water and sanitation services that are either completely self-provided or are partly shared with formal provisioning. How do people help themselves in the unserviced informal settlements of Kampala? First, let's have a look at the provision of drinking water. In the next video, you'll see how water is fetched from an unprotected spring. People do not only come to fetch water for personal use at the spring. The wells and springs in informal settlements are also the water supply for water vendors who come and fill their jerrycans here. Let's hear from Mr. Kazibwe, one of the bicycle water vendors in Kampala. He will tell us a bit more about what he thinks of the quality of water from the spring as well as how much he usually charges to deliver the water. Kati <laughs> As you can see, there are some challenges over the quality of water from the spring, such as pollution from nearby industries and toilets. However, these are naturally occurring springs that provide the community with cheaper water than that from the city's standpipes. And these springs are also a very reliable source of water since they have never really run dry. How about sanitation solutions in Kampala's informal settlements? Here too, we find a mix of formal and informal approaches provided by the community, the city of Kampala, and by NGOs such as Water for People. Since most households do not have toilets, many people use the public latrines provided by the city in conjunction with other players such as donors and companies. These toilets charge about 200 shillings per use by adults, but are free for children and other vulnerable groups. People in informal settlements also use ecosan toilets wherever they are available. <laughs>
One of the problems with sanitation in informal settlements is that due to the unplanned nature of the informal settlements, pit emptying trucks have difficulty accessing and emptying fecal sludge from the toilets. One solution to this has been for individual sanitation entrepreneurs to empty the pits manually using buckets. Organizations such as Water for People have also sought to support these entrepreneurs with access to low-tech, smaller pit emptying technologies such as the VacuTag, which can access informal settlements easier. That we have over 90%, this is for Kampala we know, over 90% of us use on-site sanitation. Now, on site, I mean, uh, they use the latrines, septic tanks, anything which is not seaward. I think we have the highest sewerage coverage, which is in Kampala, about 7%. Now, this is the city. So, it means when you go outside, mm -hmm. sometimes 100% mm -hmm. non seaward. So, they are generating a lot of fecal sludge. We have a policy, we are now saying stop building and line pit latrines, put lined latrines. Uh, we have there are two things now competing for space. Population is increasing, wastes are increasing. You no longer have this practice where I used to have a latrine here, this one is full built and around here. Some areas, there is no space for that. So those are some of the challenges we are solving. How can we go to stop the need for new latrines and then solve the problems at uh, the highest fecal sludge uh, in the country, like in those areas where we go, and 100%. Uh, non seaward, they have no option for fecal sludge treatment, so that's, those are the gaps we are trying to cover. But innovatively, we don't want to go and build a plant for every town. Um, what are the challenges that uh, Water for People is seeking to address in its development of uh, innovations like uh, the decentralized fecal sludge management, treatment, and reuse facility? Okay. Uh, as I have already said in one of the discussions I was looking at, we are looking at sustainable solutions. No organization, no individual can ever give solutions to all Uganda. Mm -hmm. But we look for mechanisms, we look like at a system. When you've 
put a latrine here, how can we have a latrine maybe in Mukono without, with minimum efforts there? We look at efficiency in our programming. How can we use uh, the few dollars we get to have a large output? That's why we work a lot with the private sector to make them sustainable. I don't need to keep making those several trips to Kitugum, but if we train the entrepreneurs there, and then we have this exit strategy, it's going to be like that area for long. Whilst emptying the pits is one problem, another problem is what to do with the collected vehicle sludge. The city's plants currently don't have the capacity to deal with all the fecal sludge. So alternative solutions to fecal sludge management are being developed by NGOs such as Water for People. One such solution has been the development of the decentralized fecal sludge treatment and reuse plant. So we went into reuse and we were looking at products which may sell in our country. This we were able to cut fecal sludge to energy. People normally when say energy they think of biogas, but for us we went for briquettes. We looked at feeds, the black soldier flies, we have them. We looked at compost and we looked at using them as a fuel, just using a dry sludge and then used maybe as a fuel. At the same time, there's a Macquarie University in collaboration with Iwak had done a research about using it to bricks, which was promising, and now it was in the hands of action researchers and entrepreneurs to take it to the market. So we also looked at that, which is our objective. We don't need to build the thing by our own, but we agitate, we, we are disruptors of the market. We disrupt, we do what others have not tried, then when they see, they copy and they go to And then we can now pull out from Kitugum, leave entrepreneurs whom we trained and now doing the business, doing the business and we exit even when we're not there, it's empty. The decentralized fecal sludge treatment technology is currently being piloted in Uganda as a small scale sludge treatment facility to which pit emptying entrepreneurs can deliver fecal sludge for treatment and reuse as briquettes for household energy needs. Now you know what water and sanitation provision in the informal settlements of Kampala looks like. You have seen which systems for drinking water provision and sanitation are created when formal service provision is scarce or absent. You have also heard from some of the people who are co-creating these informal systems of service provision for drinking and sanitation.